Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Laverne City Council. My name is Jeremy Sargent, and I am the manager of Wine and Spirits Unlimited on Waldron Road. I have managed this store since 2002, and I'm proud to announce that we have created a profitable and stable business for the city of Laverne. But like many other businesses on the Waldron Road exit, I come to this council to plead for the sake of all our businesses that the road construction must be dealt with in an expedient fashion. I've spoken with many different people, from flak representatives of TDOT to engineers of the project to TV personalities, and I have most importantly listened to the multitude of people who frequent our establishment. This road expansion from Bridgestone to the I-24 exit has become a nightmare of economic and logistical proportion. As a retail business, we rely heavily on drive-up traffic and the ability for our customers to navigate Waldron Road and the surrounding streets in a safe and reasonably secure manner. This project, in many different ways, has affected our business in which people cannot get in and out of our parking lot as it has to many of the other businesses along that stretch of road. I personally have seen many instances where I didn't think that the situation on Waldron Road could get any worse. A working entrance and exit is paramount to our ability to give customers a path in which to frequent our establishment. Just recently, the new entrance low jack has built up to our store has become a concern with customers' cars bottoming out and a steep blind drop into our parking lot. Many customers have complained about the confusion and hassle of the road construction and have told me numerous times that it is much easier for them to go elsewhere to buy their items. I have brought tonight more signatures from such people that hope that by addressing these grievances about the area being worked on, that a change can occur and that the work on the road can and will be completed within a reasonable amount of time. A reasonable amount of time to many of us has already passed. All we ask is for some sort of representation in this matter. We need answers and results in a timely manner. If this project is not rectified within the next two to three months, I do not believe that Wine and Spirits Unlimited will be able to stay open. It is a harsh reality that we may come to grip with if something is not done about the traffic, at least through the holiday season, so we could build up a reasonable amount of revenue to sustain us through the next phase of road construction. Our business is unique in that we provide 5% city tax to Laverne on top of the sales tax we collect on every purchase. Our closing would be a substantial loss to the city of Laverne in regards to the revenue we generate and the tax dollars we bring to the city. All we ask is that this road expansion should have and can still have a better means of planning so that we can have so that it can have less impact on the businesses of Waldron Road. We would also like to request the city of Laverne to use whatever means are at their disposal to draw attention to Waldron Road and encourage residents of Laverne to shop there in order to keep revenue and tax dollars from leaving Laverne for other markets. With the help of this council in this effort, maybe we can drive business to Waldron Road and keep some of the small businesses on Waldron Road open until the completion of this road expansion. I tend to look at, to, at this project as one who hires a contractor for a project at their house. If you don't like the job they are doing or feel they are being too delinquent in their work, you can let go of that contractor and go with another. Many of us on Waldron Road, including some of my customers who do road construction for a living, believe that this project is a gross misrepresentation of how road work should be conducted. Another reason for me speaking on behalf of Wine and Spirits Unlimited is the plain and simple fact that we as a whole are not surviving this road project and the detriment it has caused our business in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 percent of our sales since the first orange barrel was put out. I believe all the businesses on Waldron Road and in comparison some of the businesses in the center of Laverne are feeling the crunch that this road project has inflicted upon them. Many businesses over the past year, especially on Waldron Road, have been affected by many factors, including, including a tough economy and the loss of jobs in the area with the closing down of manufacturing plants and warehouses such as Hollywood Video, Sinram, Whirlpool, and DNK Publishing. Also, places such as Bridgestone and Quality Industries have not been operating at their full potential since the dip in the economy. This road construction project has created for many of us a perfect storm and that we have begun to spiral so far down that it may not be possible for us to pull out of this quagmire before the, this project is scheduled to be completed. So I'd like to ask for this council's help alongside some of our local senators and representatives to, pe to petition recovery.gov and those responsible for the disbursement, disbursement of stimulus money in the hope that some of that money could be used to help prop up the small businesses in the area so that we can survive this project until its completion in the hopes that we can garner more sales and customers when the road is fully open and the traffic and confusion of this project is far behind us. If, in fact, this federal government stimulus package was enacted to create more jobs and inject the economy with more money and opportunity, then it should be noted that such projects as the Waldron Road expansion shouldn't impact the businesses so much as to have them lay off employees, which we have had to do, lessen hours and shifts, as many of the restaurants and hotels have had to do, or outright close due to the many of the commuters and residents of Laverne going to Antioch or Smyrna because of a seeming boycott of the Waldron Road exit due to the traffic constraints and endless construction. 
In summation, we would like the council to address the grievances we have listed here and help us, the small businesses of Laverne, to survive this unforeseen predicament that has cost us many dollars in revenue and many loyal customers to other cities. I truly believe that we can turn the situation around with the help of this council, our representatives, and the people of Laverne showing their support for change. We thank you in advance for any and all help this council and those associated with this council can give to your hometown businesses on Exit 64. It is in this time with newly elected officials alongside previously elected officials that you can show how much all of you care about the small businesses on the eve of Small Business Day on Saturday and protect the assets that make Laverne a viable and profitable city while still maintaining its small town charm with local business being at the core of the economic landscape of Laverne. Thank you for hearing us and we hope that these actions can be taken to benefit all who live and work in Laverne. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you very much. It's 7 o'clock and we will begin the November 18th, 2010 Mayor and Alderman meeting. At this time, we are going to go immediately to the order of business. And our first order of business will be a motion to elect a new alderman. As most of you know, there is a vacant seat now that I became mayor and my seat will become open and it is for a two-year term. Um, this board is allowed per our charter to choose the person that will take that place. Uh, at our workshop, we discussed it. We have just come through a very big election. We had very, very high numbers. And uh, I feel that the person that received the third most votes received this nomination. And at this time, I would like to personally nominate Mr. Tom Broker to fill my seat as alderman. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Uh, Alderman Broker. At this, at this time, I would like to once again introduce our former vice mayor, Jerry Gann, and I'm going to let him do the honors with Mr. Broker, if that's okay with everybody. Thank you once again, Mayor. <laughs> Privileged to be here. I'd like to call up uh, Judge Dotson. Lisa? Mr. Broker, would you come around here, please, sir? Got 10 on the Bible. Right hand up. Repeat after me. 
Hi, Tom Broker. Hi, Tom Broker. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. To support the Constitution. To support the Constitution. And the laws. And the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. And the laws. And the laws. Of the state of Tennessee. Of, and the state of Tennessee. And the charter. And the charter. And ordinances. And ordinances. Of the city of Laverne. Of the city of Laverne. That I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. <coughs> discharge the duties. Of my office as alderman. Of my office as alderman. Of the city of Laverne. Of the city of Laverne. To the best of my knowledge and ability. That's my knowledge and abilities. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Judge. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call Michaela Walker up, please. She's going to present our new alderman with uh, some flowers. <laughs> well, thank you, honey. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, you have this time. Well, nope, there went my mic. Already tearing things up here. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. I appreciate it. All right. We're going to do another little presentation here. If Michaela would come back up here, please. <laughs> The City of Laverne a Certificate of Appreciation is hereby granted to Michaela Walker for participating in the City of Laverne Oath of Office Ceremonies on November 18, 2010. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, now, I know we're kind of giving y'all the run around tonight, but we do feel that we need to afford our new alderman some time to take pictures with his family since he's just gotten in. So if you will, we'd like to recess just for about five to 10 minutes and allow his family and friends to get some pictures quickly, if that's okay. Just a brief recess to, to allow him to enjoy his uh, swearing in ceremony as well.
in the session back. And we're going to begin now with number two of old business. Um, oh, I apologize. Number three, motion to elect a vice mayor. At this time, we as a board choose our vice mayor by nomination and a vote from this board. I'd like to remind this board when making your selection for vice mayor, not only will it be serving this city, but we are also, it would be emergency service coordinators for the county, which means you will also be carrying a radio with you attached to your hip at all times. Uh, also, there's many other duties that we are now with the Homeland Security that we'll be dealing with, not to mention the Waldron Road project and all of that. So we will have a lot of things going on during the day. So with that said, I'm going to open up for nominations for Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate uh, Chris Farmer. I have a nomination for Chris Farmer. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Do I have any other nominations? Any other nominations? I move that the nominations cease and we will do a roll call vote. We are voting for Chris Farmer to be our new vice mayor. Alderman Broker. Yes. Alderman Waldron. Yes. Alderman Farmer. Yes. Alderman Green. Yes. And I vote yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you our new vice mayor, Chris Farmer. Next order of business is number four, to approve the minutes of October 5th, 2010, public hearing and October 5th regular <coughs> meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. I have approve. a motion by Alderman Farmer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Greed. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Next, we're gonna start with our department uh, reports. Fire department. Mayor, Alderman, for the month of October, there was a total of 78 calls. The calls consisted of six structure fires, 18 fire alarms, two vehicle fires, three grass fires, three hazardous material calls, 20 motor vehicle accidents, seven medical calls, 17 emergency miscellaneous calls, and two non-emergency miscellaneous calls. The average response time for the month of October was 2.6 minutes. Total water consumption was 360 gallons. Any questions? Rob, where y'all at on your hydrant testing? Uh, we will begin hydrant testing starting next April. Did y'all finish this year? No, sir. We were unable to test the first part of the year due to the flood. The second part, we ended up not testing because of complications with the water. What kind of complications? Uh, as far as what I know is they were having some problems doing some work on the tanks and stuff and was having to drain it. Uh, and there was a couple other things that uh, Assistant Chief McCormick was made aware of. Any other questions? Any other comments? Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Police Department. Mayor Alvin, for the month of October, there was 2,930 calls, uh, 84 of those being crashes. Alarms was at 148. Uh, the ambulance calls was 107. 57 motors to assist, 35 domestics, 17 burglaries, 68 thefts. <laughs> Total number of arrests was 140. Uh, six of those being DUI, 43 driver's license violations, and 16 drug arrests. Uh, there was uh, 1,092 uh, citations issued, and deposits for the month was $48,681.05. I'd like to make a comment. Um, I know that most of you saw on the news, was it a week ago? Um, unfortunately, there was a murder here and I just want you to know that our police department, CID, within 24 hours had this man in custody. So we're very, very proud of them and the work they're doing and I thank you for that. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Awesome job on the. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Coast Department. Mayor, Alderman, for the month of October, the Coast Department issued two single family dwelling permits, one commercial permit, one sign permit, one garage and shed permit, five other permits, two mobile home permits. Total number of permits uh, for the month was 12. Complaints called in for the month was 18 for tall grass, eight for junk cars and yards, 18 for trash and yards, and 10 other. Impact fees for the month, $884 for road, $311 for park, $112 for police. Monthly revenue with impact fees was $3,805.50. Total number of single family permits issued year to date is 53. Total number of single family permits issued during the same time period in 2009 was 62. Total number of all permits issued year to date is 208. Any questions? <clears throat> Got a couple. Mm -hmm. The junk cars <laughs> in the yard, would we, do these people move them? We find them? We have a uh, Mike Jenkins is a municipal codes officer. He usually gets the complaints, and when he gets a complaint, he goes out and, and he'll discuss with the property owner what they need to do, which is most of the time, you know, in cases if it, depending on if it's tagged or not, or different things, he uh, works with the property owner to try to get it moved, and if not, he, he's got a few options, then, then it cites him to court. Okay. Same thing on the grass? Is that it's pretty much the same basically. process with grass and, and trash also is the same process. Good question. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Department. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, good evening. I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of our awesome director, Robin Grubb, who is being deployed, and we will definitely miss her so much. She is without a voice tonight. The Parks Department has not slowed down. In October, you can see in our visitors in the park, we had 17,380. Uh, that included our trail of treats on October 30th with approximately 2,800 children and adults who trick-or-treated around the trail. Thank you to the city departments, the elected officials, and many businesses in the community who came out and handed out candy that day. The seniors are staying very busy. We're getting ready for our Thanksgiving dinner, and then we will be having our Christmas dinner and dance in December. Also, we just finished up a Just for Kicks kickball tournament at the Veterans Park. This past Saturday, there were five teams, and happy to announce that Code Blue won the championship. Each team had approximately 13 people, and it had to be a co-ed team. At this time, I'm very happy to introduce Carl Lambert. He is the area chair from Tennessee for the employer support of the Guard and Reserve. He has a special presentation to make. Where'd she go? Oh. I'm here. I'm coming. coming. <laughs> So pleased to meet you. Thank you pleased so much for letting me, letting me be here. My name is Carl Lambert. I'm the area chairman for Middle Tennessee Committee of the Employer Support of the Garden Reserve. And also with me is Bob and Ann Bailey, who are the area chairman for the South Central, which includes Rutherford County. The ESGR was formed back in 1972 by presidential proclamation. And uh, some of you more mature folks may remember 1972 is when the draft went away. And uh, someone in their w infinite wisdom decided, well, they may be calling up the Guard and Reserve a lot more. Well, we know exactly what has happened uh, with that. Uh, one of your employees, Robin, is, uh, is a member of the Tennessee uh, Air National Guard. And uh, when the, the Guardsmen are mobilized and when they do their training, they must have support of their business, their employer. They must have support of their family. And they must have uh, uh, very good training for the military side. Uh, Robin's going to be leaving you, as, as you know, here very shortly. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to recognize you, Mayor Mosley, and also the entire Board of Aldermen for the outstanding support that you're showing to her and welcoming her back whenever she is gone. As I understand, there's two other employees of yours who are also mm -hmm. members yes. of the Guard, and I believe one mm -hmm. may be the Army Reserve and the other is the Army National Guard. It is absolutely vital that they have this type of support that you're showing. And we want to say thank you 
publicly, and in doing this, we want to present to you the uh, uh, Patriotic Employee Award. This is from the National Committee for the Employer Support of the Garden Reserve, recognizes Mayor Cena Mosley, and I say this with all of the, uh, the aldermen as well. I couldn't put your names on this. <laughs> City of Laverne, as a patriotic employer for contributing to national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. And I want to present this to you on behalf of Robin and Thank all of our military Thank folks. You. We appreciate it. With this award comes an lapel pin. It has our American flag and the ESGR flag crossed with the word patriot underneath. And I'm gonna let her pin this on Oh, what an honor. I'm determined to miss my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also gonna present one of these pins to all of the audience, yes. please. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thanks. One other thing for you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to ask you to countersign a document that's already been signed by our Secretary of Defense, Mr. Gates. Mm -hmm. This is called a statement of support. I'll show you briefly. And I'm going to read the last three bullets quickly. It says, therefore, we join other employers in pledging that we fully recognize, honor, and enforce the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act, USERA. Our managers and supervisors will have the tools they need to effectively manage those employees who serve in the Garden Reserve, and we will continually recognize and support our country service members and their families in peace, in crisis, and in war. This is just a public declaration and statement of your support for our Garden Reserve. And I have a special pen for you. Oh. You keep this pen. I will do it. <laughs> we, I think we saw this when you are at TML. We started this. I think you and I were there Good. when Alderman Green was mayor. Oh, I get to keep, keep it. that. And I'm a pen thief. And I'm, I'm going to have you to hold this, and if you would, I'm going to hold this, this and I'll just get one more shot, and we'll get out of your way and say thank you so mm -hmm. very much for allowing us to be a part of this great organization mm -hmm. and this great event. Thank you. Got it? Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you all so thank very you. much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Don. All right. Finance Department. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. Tonight's report represents the first three months of fiscal year 2010-11, uh, ending in September. For the general fund, expenses have exceeded revenues by $1.3 million. Uh, local sales tax, we've collected uh, $839,573 year to date. Uh, that is about $35,000 better than budget, and it's uh, about $45,000 better than prior years. So our sales tax is um, looking pretty good lately. Uh, State Street Aid Fund, expenses have exceeded revenues by $268,000. Stormwater revenues have exceeded expenses by $136,000. Uh, water and Sewer Fund, Expenses have exceeded revenues by $350,000. On the second page is a prior year comparison. In general fund, expenses have exceeded uh, revenues by $196,000 year to date. And in the water sewer fund, expenses have exceeded revenues by about $77,000 as compared to prior year. And on the last page is, a, uh, or I may have gotten the pages out of sync, um, is our balances in our various bank accounts. Any questions? <clears throat> what was the uh, main reason why the expenses uh, was $1.3 million over? Um, in the general fund? Yes. Well, the revenues are down right now because we are just now starting to get property tax monies in. 
Uh, this is normal for this time of the year for our revenues to be down. And then, of course, uh, the end of December, we start getting some of our bulk um, property taxes from our uh, mortgage companies. So, you know, this is just t pretty normal for this time of the year. It's not that expenses are up that much more than prior year. It's just that uh, revenues are down. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you. Okay, library. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. I have the report for the library for October 2010. We checked out 12,171 items last month, which was down slightly from the previous year. 11,774 vi patrons visited the library with an average per day of 471 people. We issued 57 new juvenile cards and 165 new adult cards last month and ran 56 programs in October with a total attendance of 4,610. Computer users were lower than the previous year with 3,925 users last month. So October brought two big events for us. We had Gross Grub at the end of the month and our fall book sale in the middle of the month. Talk about the book sale first. It exceeded our expectations. Lots of people came out to find bargains, and we made a total of a little bit over $1,600 on the day, which was a little less than double of what we did at the spring book sale, so it was a great result for us that day. Um, we really want to thank everybody for coming out and donating so generously, both with the materials we use for the sale and the proceeds from the sale. We appreciate it very much. Um, Gross Grub went very well again. Uh, we had about 250 people join us to sample our disgusting treats this year. Uh, saw lots of great costumes, including from the staff, and a good time was had by all. Uh, I know it's a little bit early, but I want to mention our December events. We've got Food for Fines, which will run from the 1st through the 15th. Um, if you have late fees on your library account, bring in a non-perishable, unexpired, canned or boxed food item, and we'll waive your fines. We suggest a donation of one food item per dollar in late fees, um, but that's entirely up to you all. Um, all the food we collect will be given to PAL for their food drive. And Breakfast with Santa. Library's done Breakfast with Santa for many, many years. We're going to change it this year. Um, last year, we found that the tickets went in about two hours after they became available. Um, so we've decided to go ticketless. And we're changing from Breakfast with Santa to the magic of Santa. It's going to be an afternoon program, no ticket required, so we don't have to turn away any children and tell them they can't see Santa this year. So that'll be on December 18th at 2 o'clock, so save the date. Are there any questions for me? Any questions? Thank, Thank you. you, Teresa. Water treatment? <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. We have a water treatment plant for the month of September of this year. Uh, we do as a comparison of year to year with our chemical usage. Uh, compared to the water taken in, uh, I guess our chemicals are ranging about the same parts per, per gallon. Uh, everything has remained in the, the testing parameters on them. Uh, uh, our maintenance for September was at $7,010. And brings our total from the, our contract year to $61,282 uh, with a balance of a little under $24,000. On our calls from the plant, we received four uh, complaints or quality calls, uh, four pertaining to pressure, one to a taste and odor. And our cross-connection program is going well. Total to date is 596 units discovered. Uh, residential inspections have kind of slowed for the winter months, uh, but we have accomplished a little 758, and our inspection fees for the month of September was $1,125. Any questions? How's the uh, <coughs> backflow event checking going? I, I see that y'all been out uh, checking the backflow preventers. Going really well. They do about uh, between 40 and 60 a month, uh, just uh, checking, rechecking. Uh, the majority of them are all passing. What are you mainly checking for? What are you checking? The up? operation of the device itself. Okay. Make sure it's got the consumer's sure system functional. separated from ours in case there is a loss of pressure. Okay. We don't want any of their water back at us. 
I got a couple. Sure. I came out a couple weeks ago and seen the building. And it looks like y'all are the maintenance of the building is pretty run down. Any idea why we've let it get to the point it's at? I mean, it's the roof and ceiling and floors, and they're pretty rough. They are in, in a little despair. Um, what we mainly work with is the, the quality of the water. And we do run down, not as, uh, I guess the cosmetic features aren't as popular as they should be. Um, well, my concern is We've, somebody's let it get to that point, and if it's ours and we have to maintain it, shouldn't somebody be telling us that it's the roof's leaking, the tiles are coming loose? Right, we have. Because it, it's going to be quite costly to have to fix it. We did have the uh, inspector come out this week, and he said, you know, the roof that he looked at, he's not the exact roof or anything, but he looks like just the age and deterioration of some of the the caulking, the ceiling around it, but the roof in itself uh, looks in good shape. It's just water is one of those, or rain water is one of those creatures that uh, it's hard to determine where it's coming in at. Uh, My question uh, though, I'm trying to, who, who notifies us when there's a problem with the building? That, that's where I'm, I'm a little confused because I mean, to me, they said it was new like six years ago mm -hmm. and it, it really looks run down. I mean, at some point, somebody should have noticed that we were having some cosmetic issues, the floors were cracking, the tiles were coming loose, right. and reported it back to the board at some point. We have been in communication some with uh, Mr. Moshe, with the city administrator, and we have, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, it wasn't in that bad of despair but it has grown since uh, I think our air condition problem has grown some more. Sir, what, uh, what type of policies do we have in place if there, if there is a problem right now? I mean, who do you go to? Where, what's the next, next uh, step if there is a problem? I think it's just more than just a little bit. Of, um, I, was, I, I too was out there and um, tile tore up all across the, the laboratory. Uh, it isn't just a little bit of rainwater. The, I don't think there was any area of the roof was not coming down or had, was not a problem. So if there is a problem, where, what is the next step that you go to? Is uh, it here? Is it, 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 how, do we, how do we fix a problem um, in the future if something like that happens? So we just let it go and, and so I'm not trying to, I'm just asking. No, we definitely what, don't let it go. Uh, I guess the, our our contact point has been to go to Mr. Moshe and he advises whether we need to bring it to, to board or our council. Uh, some of them we handled before that, that area came into. Uh, some lighting issues we had. Uh, but it's just a point of, uh, I guess, uh, letting, letting you know about it. Uh, Tom, what about your budget? Our, how about your budget? What do you use your budget for? It's mainly on repair and maintenance of the, the treatment. Uh, right, the water. Right. Uh, if okay. I recall, now the, the maintenance on the building is the city's responsibility. Y'all mainly do the water quality issue, am yes. I right? Right. Okay. We, uh, if the repairs need to do with the, the building, uh, the city needs to see that it, uh, it gets done. And uh, I know myself, uh, I probably should have went out there myself more often than I do uh, to in, to inspect the building. That's that's one department that I that I hardly ever go out there to do, and that might be something that this board needs to step up and and uh, look at more. I Which know. we obviously do, but when you hire a company out to do it, you're assuming that they are well, they, taking care of everything on the building. Or in, it's to the if point I, if, where if black I'm mold right, I think is you, on the on I the I think y'all do the water quality. That's uh, been there for quite a is, while. Is that in the contract that they do the building, or it's it's worded as the maintenance of the of the water treatment process, mm -hmm. uh, and that's taken as the equipment wise, making sure the water quality is to performance or to. Uh, My question is, do you have enough in your budget to do the water and give us the quality of water we need, and keep the maintenance on the building up? No. Okay. Uh, 
next month when we come in with the October report, we've had a big maintenance issue that we added some uh, filter media, which was a little over $40,000. And that puts the budget pretty much over uh, for the year. So if we have one maintenance issue that is with water quality, that's pretty much the budget for, the, for our, our contract year. And we're, we're at, you know, the, the budget is, the maintenance budget is 85000 250. Well, another thing I noticed out there was a lot of cigarette butts inside the building. Now, aren't all of our city buildings smoke free? I mean, I even seen cigarette butts inside of a room that said hazardous, caustic chemicals, and they'd been putting them out on a fan. They were all in the grate down through there. That's something it that was kind of a letdown to see that, you know, it's a city building. We don't smoke in any of the city buildings. I smoke myself and, you know, I wouldn't be smoking around hazardous chemicals. Right. Only one chemical in there is, is hazardous or considered flammable uh, in our uh, powder activated carbon. But the, uh, the situation was addressed. Uh, and I think the pass again is a lot, lot stricter on smoking out there uh, as we narrow it down to only two of our employees that are smokers. And my last question, when you go out into the treatment plant, I don't know anything about water treatment. You've got the big holding tanks, I assume, and straight when you come in, there's a big machine with a bunch of pipes. It look pretty new. When you go straight out into the plant, you go around the stairs to the right. Oh, it's okay. I'm, what uh, is that? It's a membrane filtration. <laughs> And what does it do? It was put there originally, I believe that was before our contract, to reclaim the wastewater that we use for, it discharges our sludge into the lagoon and our backwash water, which is the, from the filters, the backwash every uh, so often in time. And all that discarded uh, water goes to the holding lagoon and the theory was to let it settle and then we take the water back into the plant running through that filtration machine but the water from the lake is so high in iron and manganese that we cannot filter it through that membrane filtration. And it's so just, it's useless? It, uh, it's not designed to, to really put what we're... And how much? I really don't know. Did that, that cost? No. That was... I mean, because if it's useless, why are we, why are we not try to sell it? Die. To recoup some of our money. You know how long it's been there? It was, I think, over 2005, 2006, I think it was installed there. And we've made several attempts to run it, uh, and it does work for a limited time, and then the levels of manganese come through, and it's just not something we want to put in the, in the public system. Do we know what the cost to the city was? I do not know. We'll find that out. I can speak. We'll find that out. The cost of it. I mean, because we've got some major issues going out there that's going to cost this board a great deal of money. And we've, mm -hmm. we've taken field trips out there, mm -hmm. and I can't believe we've allowed it to get to this level again on our mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. When you assume, you know what that usually means. Um, <laughs> so we should have been keeping an eye on that, but we trusted in in Severn Trent to let us know, you know, when something's going on and when the leak's been in that building that long that you have m black mold growing, you know, it should have been reported immediately. And if it was reported immediately, it should be documented. And I'd like to know why it wasn't brought to this board's attention and, instead of allowing this to continue on and on and on. I mean, this is our, our what we drink. Regardless mm -hmm. if it's in the ceiling or not, you would expect to walk into this building and it be spotless because mm -hmm. that is water being produced that we're going to go in, that we're going to take into our bodies. And I, you know, I just can't imagine this, this, the miscommunication. I'd like to know where the communication was broke down and what happened. And uh, I think there's some things that we absolutely need to get to the bottom of. So. Because, I mean, we may have to sell the 
filtration system that we don't use just to recoup the money to fix the building at this point because I mean there were some pretty big cracks in the floor mm -hmm. where they'd separated from the walls and not that that's Charles fault it just I feel like it should have been brought to somebody's attention much sooner before it got to the point that because it looks like it's going to be quite, quite costly to fix. I went out there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to have to give them more in their budget if we expect them to keep it up. Any other comments at this time? I, I just agree that if we're going to even, wherever the budget, whether we're doing the maintenance or you all are doing the mm -hmm. maintenance, I believe that there, there has to be some protocol, some procedure in place that, that, that you do or report back to the board or to someone that, uh, that we, you know, it, it, that didn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Mm -hmm. We've got to have some accountability, especially when it comes to these, these buildings, because mm -hmm. we just cannot sit back and wait and then they're almost falling apart before we find out and fix them and money's tight. So I agree, we're going to have to come up with some protocols or something take care of this. Anyone else? Concerns? Comments? Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Public Works. Mayor, members of the board, uh, first of all, congratulations to everybody tonight. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, <clears throat> Street Department, uh, they're in kind of a transition stage where um, we've been on the mode of uh, putting asphalt in, paving, and uh, the mowing, and that's pretty much coming to an end. Now we're going to be looking at you know, snow removal, uh, ice and cinder repair. Um, as a matter of fact, are we've got two salt spreaders uh, one is fairly old uh, we're getting trying to get those both in shape uh, I may be coming to the next workshop uh, with, with some recommendations on our salt spreading program uh, I think what we're doing is uh, not planning far enough ahead in a lot of instances and actually looking at at the end of the season in the spring doing a review of everything that we've done on snow removal and salt spreading and come up with recommendations on how we can improve it um, you can see with the the chipper pickups they never let up we had 363 pickups last month and I think one of the ways we were able to do that is we had an increased amount of uh, man hours from the workhouse we had 349 hours that were utilized from the workhouse. Uh, the sewer department, the big issue there is we finally completed the Hollandale pump station. They pretty much have gotten a lot of the glitches out of it. The auto dialing for the alarms is in place and working. And uh, those pumps are working really good. Uh, well, during the rains, we, we had it, they didn't get anywhere near to overflow, and we're real happy with that station. The water department, they, they had a, a fairly rough month. They had 16 water line breaks. Um, the good thing is we, you know, we got them all fixed. The bad thing is it resulted in 300 hours of overtime. Um, you know, that we try to do everything we can to curtail overtime, but uh, with a water line break, it's just an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, there's, we're still working on our sanitary survey. Uh, we're getting a lot more questions than we have in the past, and uh, Lloyd's been trying to handle those and keeping everything in writing. Uh, we installed two fire hydrants on Blair Road, and we installed, uh, reinstalled a, a fire hydrant on JFK Drive. So it was a fairly busy month for the water department. Any questions? Uh, I can always tell when y'all are busy in the chipper. I get less calls from citizens with, with brush land right. You get you mentioned about the water lake 16. A lot of our, I, I know you finding out, a lot of our water in the 
in the ground pipes is, is getting to be 30 and 40 years old. And that's one thing we, we need to look at at budget time is capital projects. Uh, we, a lot of these pipes in the ground, and it, it's kind of like over at the water treatment plant, you know, a lot of stuff in the city is, is, is need to be updated and, and it's going to take some money and the budget time is going to be rough because infrastructure, like in 16 water breaks, next year if we don't do something, it, it might even double. Got you know, it. No, you know, the one reason over the past 10, 10 years is probably why we've been ne neglected. You know, money's been tight. You know, we've stretched it and stretched it, but something we might need to look at it at budget time is, is infrastructure. Yeah, but one of, the, one of our goals is to work close with Griggs and Maloney and come up with a five-year capital improvement plan uh, and look at that versus what the budget is showing. So uh, we want to do that with water and sewer both. Because there's a lot of water pipes in the ground in Laverne, been here 30 and 40 years, and it's, and it's some here that's, I, I wouldn't doubt it's still on two inch, two inch. And it's some fire hydrants here that's on, that's on four inch and two inch pipe. There's, and a, I know there's a lot of work to do. Fire, fire hydrants, it's, it's just stubbed in the ground. It's not hooked up, but but y'all done a good job on the on the chipper because I ain't got no calls. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Any other comments? Thank, Thank you. you. Now to old business. First reading ordinance two thousand and ten twenty three, an ordinance to amend Article two section two point zero two zero. Article 4, Section 4.070, and Article 8, Section 8.080 of the Laverne Zoning Ordinance regarding signs received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on September the 28th, 2010. At the workshop, we discussed this. I think there were several of us that was wanting to make some additions. Do you know, this and send it back to the Planning Commission. One uh, provision I like to make on it, and I, I, we didn't address it that good in the Planning Commission, is political signs on city property. Uh, I was the only one that didn't run this election, and I probably got more calls than y'all because everybody else run but me. I got more complaints <laughs> over us. there on on the <laughs> uh, the Civic Auditorium. I would agree. Uh, it was I awful. like to see it was a awful. restriction put on signs. Myself, I like to put only three signs per candidate on c on each city property. That's what I like to see is three, you, you three signs. Me, I two. Three <laughs> signs. Well, I go with two. But and I think these were some of the, the issues that we wanted to address, and, and I wanted the two uh, new members to have the opportunity to really read, and mm -hmm. they may want to even add additional. So at Maybe. this time, if we want to send it back to the Planning Commission, Bruce, do I need to just... Do we need to just de de deny this or just send it back to the Planning Commission? You can make a motion to send it back to the Planning okay. Commission if you want, since this is first reading. Okay. Do I have a motion to send back to the Planning Commission? I'll make a motion to send it back. I have a motion by Alderman Farmer. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Alderman Broker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next, motion to approve a license agreement for poll uh, attachments with Middle Tennessee Electric Membership Corporation. I believe Evan. Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is a revised contract, and, and the language that I objected to has been removed, so I, I approve it as to form. Cal may be able to explain what it is if the board's interested. Okay. <coughs> Since we have two new ones, you want to just give them a brief yep. synopsis? Mayor and Alderman, this is the fiber line that we're going to have for the signal interconnect out there on, on Walden Road. And um, we, have, we have some poles at Middle Tennessee Electric Home that we'll need to attach to. So this is an agreement that allow us to do that. All right. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Motion made by Alderman Green. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Broker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next will be our consent agenda. <clears throat> and I believe on the consent agenda, the only thing that was changed, correct me if I'm wrong, we did take the contract out with Bumpus. Uh, 
motorcycles for the police officers. Everything else is the same. We're going to be reviewing that uh, lease agreement. We're going to maybe looking at some other options there, to my yes, understanding. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda items? I'll make the motion. Motion made by Alderman Green. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Alderman Farmer. Do I have any discussion? You may wish to dis discuss anything on here. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we're going to move on to new business. This is the appointment of board members. Uh, first up is the local emergency planning committee, and this is for the environmental uh, <coughs> solutions on that one. I think they're going. Okay. He's going to stay on. Okay, so he is. So they have gotten in touch with Mr. I, is it the last I heard. Him. Okay. All right. So I have a recommendation from the assistant chief, uh, Ricky McCormick that Mr. Lalo, I hope I'm saying that correctly, be placed back on this committee and he will be representing the environmental services solution. All in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 Mayor, we need, we need a motion and a second. I need a motion to approve him. I'll make the motion. Alderman Green, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, Bruce. That's all right, thank you. Thanks all so right. <laughs> Next, we have our Parks and Recreation. This will be um, a council position, and this will be replacing uh, Vice Mayor Jerry Gann, who chaired this board, um, I think from 2002, he began on this board. Um, at this time, I would like to make the recommendation that um, Alderman Broker take this committee. A second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I'm going to ask this as well, since the Greenway meets with the Park and Recreation Board, is, would you mind going on and, and taking that one as well? Sure. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to appoint uh, Alderman Broker to the Greenway Advisory Committee. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next will be the Economic Development Advisory Committee. That is a council position that is vacant. And I will be taking that position or making a motion that I take that position. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have the Local Emergency Planning Committee. That is a council position that is vacant. And I would like to make the motion that Chris Farmer, uh, Vice Mayor Farmer, take this position, please. And do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeal. And this is a council position. Um, Alderman Walden has stepped down from this position at this time. We do thank you for your service on this board. I've served on here for seven and a half years and I've talked to the mayor uh, about a week and a half ago and, and told her that was, the economy ain't much going on. I said, this is the perfect time to put somebody new on there. And uh, so I'm, I'm stepping down from the planning commission. And like I talked to uh, the chairman today, if they need, need me to come and and send in and listen in, I'd be happy to it. But, but they got a good they got a good group over there. They they won't have a bit of trouble without me. Matter of fact, they might do better without me. <laughs> well, we do thank you for your service on that board. <coughs> and at this time, I believe the planning commission is at the mayor's pleasure. And I would and the, um, like to ask if Miss is the, it not the council position is voted on by the board. It is voted on. Yes, okay. ma'am. Um, I have. Uh, discuss this with uh, Alderman Broker, and I'd like to make a motion that he take the Planning Commission board. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
welcome to all the committees and the boards, everybody. Thank you all very, very much for stepping up to the plate for us. Um, I think I've got everything on that one. Next, motion to approve an agreement with Wiser Company, LLC, for construction engineering inspection services for the Fergus Road Sidewalks Project. At this time, I have had a discussion with our city engineer regarding this matter, and we feel that more conversation needs to take place, more information needs to be given to us regarding the funding. Yes, Mayor and Alderman. We'd, we'd kind of like to be able to talk to state a little bit more to talk about some funding and, and some different things to, to get this in line before, we, before you vote on it. So, so we're asking if you would defer till next meeting if, if possible. Do I have a motion to defer? Motion. I have a motion made by Alderman Broker to defer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Green. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Uh, next, first reading, Ordinance 2010-24, and Ordinance to Amend Title I, Chapter 1, Section 1-103 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the Citizens Forum. On the citizens forum, what this is actually doing is allowing the citizens to come up either at the workshop or on the night of the meeting, 15 minutes prior to the meeting, and fill out a paper with their name, address, and what they would like to discuss. It's given them, we're still maintaining the three minutes, but I feel that this has given the citizens a little more freedom to listen to the workshop before they come up here, there may be something they wish to discuss. We still will maintain order. We still do it at the same time. But they're not having to call and make an appointment to get on the agenda. I really like this, probably better than what we had before. Um, do we need to add something to this, or Bruce Camby? If we have a, sometimes the, the big deal, we have a rezoning deal. Uh, if we have a hundred people coming in, all hundred wants to talk. Uh, I know with the county, they had some issues with the uh, Bible Park. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. meeting went to like one or two o'clock in the morning, and after the first ten people talked, everybody was coming up and saying the same thing. Do we need to make a uh, tw the twenty-five people, or, or do we need to? Take it any further. Well, I think we've addressed some of that in the past because we've actually had that happen here still when they're on the agenda. I think when we see if we do have a major, um, this may be a, an Evan question, if we see that we have 150 people in here all on a rezoning issue, at that time, can we not say at this time we do know why everyone's here? May you? And, and ask them to pick maybe two to three speakers to address that issue. Do we need to have it in writing? Mayor, I, I, I think if, given that, that concern, you may, we may want to put something in the ordinance that gives the board the flexibility to do that. And okay. that's not in the ordinance right now. And that doesn't mean that you couldn't do that if okay. it came up. Mm -hmm. But I would, my, if, if, if that's a concern, my preference would be to have something in the ordinance. Only reason I brought it up, I, I watched that Bible Park thing. I started watching it at 7 o'clock. And I figured, well, it'd be over by nine. And I said, well, I'm going to give it 30 more minutes. And I, it was 12 and it was one o'clock. <laughs> and after the first 10 people, they were saying the same, the same thing. So, you know. Okay, I have a question. And, and I'm all for everybody to, to, to get up there and mm. talk, but we about to be ready for two or three o'clock in the morning meetings, you know, if we don't have something in there. Can we make a motion to approve with the addition, or do we need to just defer this to next month? Which would you? You know, I, I'd prefer probably to defer it since okay. it's, um, you know, it'll it'll fundamentally change the ordinance. Because we so. want it perfect. Yeah, I mean, we, we've gotten this far, and it, we're, everybody's pretty pleased. With but I really like that. I really like the the because a lot of people, even on the rezoning, they came that night and didn't know <laughs> nothing about the the previous engagement that you had to had to call, so I think that'll work out good. But while we changed it, maybe we just need to fine tune it and make it good. It's fair for everybody, because if somebody good. comes to speak, and if it's two or three o'clock in the morning, a lot of people can't, can't stay that late. Yes. <laughs> um, so do I have a motion to defer this, to, to work on it just a little bit further? I'll make a motion to defer it. 
to have a motion made by Alderman Farmer, uh, Vice Mayor Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Second, second. by Alderman Broker. All in favor of deferral? Aye. 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 Resolution 2010-17, a resolution to amend the City of Laverne purchasing procedures to require Board of Mayor and Alderman approval of purchases over $5,000. This, what this is doing, we still have the 10,000 that we do not have to go to bid. Correct me if I'm incorrect, Bruce. Mm -hmm. It's still at 10,000 before we have to actually bid it out. But right now, I've discussed this with Phyllis. Phyllis feels more comfortable. Our purchasing is gonna make it a little bit easier with money being tight, that we move it back Leave it at 10000 for the bid, but anything over 5000 has to come through here and get our okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have to put it out to bid, but we do have our okay to have to spend anything over $5,000. Mm -hmm. And that's still going to keep it where we can continue to move things quickly when necessary, but it gives them just a little more control with money being tight to watch our pennies. Do I have a motion? I have a Kind of a question on okay. it. Um, my only concern about it is that uh, I know of an emergency situation, somebody could purchase something yes. right away. But is this going to slow the process down um, for the different department heads? Um, it, will they have to sit and wait a, a month where they let's say they needed something no, that maybe isn't pending an or an emergency? If it's an Fairly emergency, you have, to, mm -hmm. you have to do it right then. Well, I'm, I'm saying something that's not really an emergency, maybe oh. something that. Um, Gosh, I'll give you something I'm familiar with in the baseball field. If, if something happened on, on a fencing um, where it was going to need to be, say, between five and $10,000, it isn't pending, it isn't an emergency, but it's something that maybe could, could help Parks and Rec. Are they going to have to wait a month? Is this going to slow the process down? And that's my yeah. only concern. If with it has to come Please. before the board, it will. What we normally do in the past is we had made the purchase and still brought it before the board for, you know, official approval. If it's something that has to be done, it's we not extreme, still, it's we not an still extreme treat emergency. It as, a, as a emergency right. purchase. Right. Which most of the time in situations like that, it is an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, but just your everyday spending is what we're trying to deter right now. The board would be made aware of the purchase. But, but it would come before the board for mm -hmm. official approval. Good question. Any more questions? Any more concerns? Okay, do I have a motion regarding this, this resolution? I make a motion. Motion to accept? Accept. Motion to accept, made by Alderman Green. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Broker. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Resolution 2010-18, a resolution authorizing the City of Laverne to participate in the TML Risk Management Pool Driver Safety Matching Grant Program. This is a program that we, we do every year with TML. Usually it's roughly, what, $2,000 is all it is. <coughs> but we do have to have a resolution in order to, um, mm -hmm. to work with TML on this. Do I, make, I have a motion? I make a motion we accept. A motion to accept. Do I have second. a second? Second by Vice Mayor Farmer. Any questions? Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Okay, we're going to start with the new kid on the block, Alderman Broker. Well, first of all, I want to... Uh, Tell everyone thank you. I'm going to thank the board here for, for uh, appointing me. I want to thank the citizens of Laverne to come out. They came out uh, like they did in the election. Um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to working hard for the city of Laverne. And uh, my door is open. My phone's always on. Uh, please call me. And uh, again, thank you. And really looking forward to it. Also, want to welcome Chris Farmer and Tom aboard. Congratulations for you and Sherry getting reelected, and you've been mayor. Pre uh, 
congratulations. And I want to emphasize uh, the toy drive. Uh, encouraging everybody to bring a toy, unwrapped toy, to the police department. You can bring it to City Hall. Well, Lieutenant Murphy can distribute it at Christmas time. Uh, unwrapped gift for a child. And I want to also want to give a, a thanks to Donnie and Amber Fergus for greatly helping in the uh, Feed the Hungry that we had on Musburgh Road back last month. They worked all day long cooking cornbread and, and beans and stuff. We had a big turnout of, of volunteers and uh, they worked real hard. And uh, local businesses chipped in and we had local business restaurants and people bringing food to us. And uh, hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. And I, I, I wore my turkey tie. So just everybody have a safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. Vice Mayor Farmer. I want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to be the vice mayor and being elected and wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I'd like to say congratulations to you, Miss Mayor, and to Tom and Chris. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you, and I appreciate the support that the city gave me, putting me back in. So, and I wish everyone a happy and a great Thanksgiving with your family. And we need to please remember the ones that aren't going to have anything to eat. So, we need to remember our people that have gone through a rough time. It's been a hard year for everybody. Thank you. I guess we're going to uh, finish up with me. I can't thank this city enough for giving me this opportunity to serve you. Uh, this board works for you. We don't sit up here and work for ourselves. You have all of our phone numbers, and I'm going to be more than willing to give out the two new ones phone number. So, <laughs> but I do appreciate uh, you coming aboard with us. We're going to be a team. We're going to work very, very hard. I'm excited about our, our future. Things are not going to happen overnight. We're not going to build things overnight. But together, I think this group can get some things done. Each of them on these board has some wonderful ideas, some wonderful thoughts. Um, they're willing to get out and work, and that's the big key, is working and going toward the future. Uh, we've already had some meetings with, and I'm going to pass this along, with the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce, and every word that came with the Chamber of Commerce mouth from the, each different person that I met has said nothing but Laverne is sitting on prime time property, and y'all can move forward. We're going to get it done, and we're going to get it all done together. And they're all willing to work very diligently with us. So please be patient with us. I do have an office here. I will be here every day. If I'm not here, I'm in meetings. Uh, so if I'm not answering my phone, you know, I've got it on, on vibrate while I'm in a meeting. But we're going to be here to work for you. And I thank every one of you and thank everyone up here for giving me this opportunity to serve you for the next few four years. And guys, it's going to be great. I'm excited, Miss Peters, excited for one. <laughs>